13 reasons to not watch football and 13 things to do otherwise as we consider the reality of life without football i'd like for us to pray lord lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation on thee do i wait all the day reason number three do not watch football alcohol If you go to the scriptures, you will find clear warning to avoid alcohol at all costs. In Isaiah chapter five, verse 11, we are warned, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them. Then in Proverbs 20, beginning in verse one, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. In Judges 13 verse 4, now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing because finally in isaiah chapter 5 verse 22 woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink so these words from the scripture speak clearly to us and they seem so relevant because they have attached not just drinking as a habit but drinking as a lifestyle and that is not a coincidence. By making alcohol a lifestyle or making it a part of even what we call the high life, we're able to create a bonding with a product that really meets us and really feeds us emotionally. And in this case, it's a product so powerful that its physical impact actually alters our behavior. And it's clear that it's working. When you take the official beer sponsor of the NFL, Bud Light. You see that Anheuser-Busch, which owns or produces Bud Light, in 2015, they agreed to a sponsorship extension through the 2022 Super Bowl. Now, this deal alone will pay the NFL $1.4 billion. So that totals out to just over $7 million for each team every year of the sponsorship. According to one Anheuser-Busch executive, we've done the math and wouldn't be renewing this sponsorship if we didn't believe this would allow us to sell more beer. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that sound like somebody worthy of a corner office? It's simple common sense. They wouldn't sponsor it. They wouldn't promote the sport if the fans of the sport, the patrons of the, of the sport did not consume enough beer to justify the sponsorship. So there's a direct correlation between the athletic world and alcohol. They work hand in hand and they both fuel one another. So it's impossible to support one without your support for one spilling over into the other. Even just the matter of entering the, the arena or going into the, the, the stadium, the economy of food at sporting events is, is real. Two thirds or more of a facility's concessions revenues come from hot dogs, peanuts, and other ballpark staples. So basically it comes from junk food, which in and of itself proves to be unclean food. But again, focusing on alcohol, we realize that drinks almost always have a very high profit margin, normally in excess of 90%. So while there may be food being eaten, money, the real money is made off of alcohol. One reason, because the profit margin is so high, and two, because of the alcohol drive, you're prone to consume more than you actually would in the case of eating more. So when you see this excess on the part of the patron,
it's no coincidence that you see it happening on the part of the player on the field. I mean, how often do we have to look at a rap sheet and see a connection between the lifestyle and the negative impact that it has on someone and how it proves scripture to be true? For example, Eric Anderson, a Minnesota Viking. In November of 2013 and January of 2014, this troubled linebacker was arrested on suspicion for drunk driving twice in six weeks, first on the 19th of November and then for a second time on New Year's Day. John Boyette plays for the Indianapolis Colts back in September 2013, despite the repeatedly telling officers, you can't arrest me, I'm a Colts player. The rookie safety was indeed arrested for disorderly public intoxication and resisting an officer. Now note what he says in his defense. In his defense, he says, I'm a football player. The mentality, the not just the bravado, but the pride aspect is what really comes out in a drunken state to show you what is being put into a person's mind when you're being deified because of your athletic abilities or your physical attributes, as opposed to your character. When you look at a young player like Joe Morgan back in 2013 of May, this wide receiver was arrested for driving without a license and a DUI after blowing well over the legal limit in a field sobriety test. Morgan was found in Jefferson Parish asleep behind the wheel of his car that was parked on the shoulder lane of an expressway in Jefferson Parish. Or perhaps Cody Grimm, a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Back in 2013, the safety was arrested twice in three months for public intoxication charges. And Ronell Lewis, a Detroit Lion, in April of 2013, the linebacker was arrested on charges of public intoxication and disturbing the peace after getting into a bar brawl in Oklahoma. What happened is Lewis pushed the man to the ground, punched him in the face in front of the police, but he refused to stop fighting even after being tased by an officer. He finally dropped to the ground after being tased a second time and was transported to a hospital for treatment. Evan Rodriguez, Chicago Bears, in March and May of 2013, he was arrested and charged with disorderly intoxication and resisting arrest last March after becoming combative with police. He was a passenger in a car accident, but police immediately noticed his slurred speech, bloodshot and watery eyes, and a strong odor of alcoholic beverage emitting from his breath, according to the report. He refused to give his information to the officers because I'm an NFL player. And he refused to return to the sidewalk after approaching an officer, screaming at them that he was hard-headed like that, and I don't have to listen. The words spoken, oftentimes, in a drunken state, are, are usually the truest self. And when you see this pattern, not just of the behavior, but even the reaction in the behavior, the resistance to authority, the bravado based on occupation, all of these things are accentuated when we're drunk. And they're actually something that the scripture spoke to in the verses that we just read. And one reason to avoid alcohol. Because on one hand, in a sober mind, you get upset. But if you're drunk, you'd go into a rage. They take the negatives of human emotions and they emphasize and exacerbate it. Whether it's sadness, whether it's joy, even if it's anger, and even if it's rage. And they take them to extremes. When you look at the data... And this is not specific to point out the fallacy of a person as a player, but it's simply data. Information that lets us know that when you look at the instances of an NFL player charged or cited from 2000 to 2014, you'll find that the vast majority of those charges have to do not just with intoxication or being drunk, but driving while drunk, impaired driving, and no one understands and knows the hurt and the pain and the lunacy of doing that, like someone who's lost a family member due to drunk driving, due to someone getting behind a car with the means to not have to drive, but choosing to do so, regardless of the, the cost or the expense to other people's lives. This is why scripture warns us to avoid alcohol, not to minimize it, to avoid it. Because right behind driving under the influence, the greatest rate of instances of players cited or charged you see assault and battery and then just third to that is domestic violence and you don't really see a drop even with drugs until you get down to things like disorderly conduct gun related charges things of that nature the vast majority of them have to do with intoxication that then leads to violent or abusive behavior 
But the reality of intoxication is not just alcohol based, but oftentimes alcohol proves to be the gateway to more serious drugs or ways to impair pain or to quote, elevate your performance. Of retired NFL players, Washington University in St. Louis did a study of 644 players who retired between 1979 and 2006. And what they found is that 54% of them reported using prescription painkillers during their careers. So a little bit over than half used drugs to dull the pain. Now, of that group that used the drugs, 71% admitted that they had misused those drugs, meaning that they got prescribed drugs without prescriptions, or they used more drugs than they were prescribed. They became addicted. 68% of that group of youth drugs also reported that they did not get these drugs from doctors. So you have more than half of the players admitting to using drugs. And the majority of those who then use those drugs abuse them and they're getting them from illegal means, black market drug dealers so you see a connection now between players and what we would call the dark sides of life or black market industries and so you see how crime not just in terms of behavior but crime in terms of enterprise is in one way drawn or attached to the whole sports industrial complex in another analysis of player behavior and a possible link between drugs and alcohol, a website called NFLarrest.com has actually taken the time to create an arrest meter a database of arrest of players and the statistics, and it's broken it down within each and every team in the league. And so you have, say, for example, to the far left, the Minnesota Vikings. But then within each team, you'll see a color code that represents the crimes for that particular team. And so obviously the larger, the more color you see, the prevalence of that violation within each team. And just by quickly looking at the graph, you see two colors, you see blue, you see orange, and then you also see green. And we'll get to the green in our next topic. But here we see the green being overwhelmed by the blue and the orange. Blue representing DUI, driving under the influence, normally under the influence of alcohol. And then secondly, drugs, whether it's the consuming or the purchase or the selling of drugs. So this is data. These are numbers that cannot be denied. And so if there is this kind of relationship, this kind of closeness between the sports entertainment complex and alcohol and drugs, either from a performance basis or even as a way to fund particular black market industries or criminal enterprises, these are things that have to be taken into account as a patron to ask myself, do I want to support players? Do I want to endorse silently disorderly conduct that I know as a believer is inconsistent with what I ought to do? And should I be spending my money elsewhere? These are questions that are answered, not just in the, in the homes of our own mind, but they're even answered in scripture because the conclusion of the matter is we consider this reason why to step away from football or sports in that matter in first Corinthians chapter six, verse 19, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy ghost, which is in you, which you have of God and ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's naturally sports. You actually glorify yourself in your body because without that body or without what it does you would not be on a level to compete but scripture is encouraging all of us athletes and watchers alike to give our bodies as living sacrifice and keep it that way because of the belief that this body that i have this life that i have belongs to god it belongs to god because not only was i made by god but i have been saved by god i have been restored and i've been put into a new and living way that allows me to not live subject to my passions, but instead by the spirit of God and by the grace of God, I actually have authority over my body. My mind dictates what my body does and not the other way around. And I'm able to live a happy, healthy, wholesome life because I choose to live for who I belong to. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Something to consider as we consider reasons why to not watch the NFL, 
the closeness and the prevalence and the reality of alcohol. <laughs>